Hundreds of workers in our state are facing a strike as well and standing up for workers throughout the entertainment industry. Our speaker is Tom Schwartz. Tom's an organizer, an amazing activist that we've been working with for years. We knew him from his outstanding work with the United Food and Commercial Workers in Dallas. But today, we're really proud, Tom, to have you in the House so that our delegates can convey to you and your members that we support SAG-AFTRA and we will be with you one day longer, one day stronger. Tom Schwartz, come on up. Good morning. Um, behind that, like I was coming out thinking there were like 20 people in here and I was like, ah, this is gonna be cake. If I pass out, don't tell Brianna, okay? She'll never forgive me. Okay, okay, great. Um, thank you for that warm welcome, Rick. I'm really glad to be here with all of you today. Again, I'm Tom Schwartz. I'm the executive director of the Houston Austin and the Dallas Fort Worth locals for SAG-AFTRA. Um, together, we represent over 2,500 members in Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. And nationally, SAG-AFTRA represents 160,000 actors dancers, DJs, broadcasters, stunt performers, and all types of folks um, in the media and performance industry. I wanna thank Rick uh, and Leonard in particular for inviting me here today to talk with all of you uh, and just give them a big shout out. First of all, they're doing a great job. Rick and Leonard, everybody appreciates you. Um, the work they've done and continue to do for working people all across the state is inspiring. Um, the labor movement's in great hands with the two of them at the helm here. Every member of the leadership and staff from every affiliate, um, every labor council, every labor federation do great work every day and we're so appreciative of all of you, all the work you do. Um, but more importantly, every rank and file member across the state across the country, really, um, that commits themselves uh, to the sacrifice to make it possible for us to imagine a world where working people are treated with dignity and respect, and we're able to provide for our families and build up our local communities so every member of society can share in the achievements and the dream that we're all fighting for. So thanks to all of you in the crowd today just to show up to these meetings isn't easy, I know. You put in a lot of time to this and I appreciate you um, and an opportunity to address all of you. I'm gonna to speak to the issue at hand and sag after a strike, but first um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the convention, the reason I'm here, and help set the stage for this week. Um, you know, my former life, as Rick mentioned, was as a political organizer for UFCW. Um, I worked at UFCW for over six years and learned what it meant to be a part of the labor movement from grocery store workers, folks at meatpacking plants and nursing homes, working through the pandemic, um, struggling with all kinds of issues. My father was never more proud of me than the day I left the political campaign world and went to go work for a local labor affiliate. My dad signed up for the sheet metal workers. Shout out to any sheet metal workers in the house today. We got a few, okay. Um, my dad signed up for sheet metal workers local 103 when he was 17 years old, and he's still a member today, going on 65, I think. Um, I remember sitting on my dad's lap at the local Idaho Falls, Idaho CLC meetings and having my dad explain to me on the way home that we were attending those meetings not just so we could have a better life, a decent paycheck, braces, retainers, health insurance, and a pension for him to retire on so he can take care of my kids, hopefully, um, but so that every working person in our community who either didn't have the opportunity to join a union yet or hadn't yet seen the light um, could have the same opportunities and comforts that we did in our family. When I started my new position with the Screen Actors Guild, and a note, it's the Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. You hear a lot of SAG, 
don't leave out the AFTRA. It's, it's a sensitive issue. I almost didn't get this job because in my initial interview, I just thought it was SAG. Uh, luckily, my boss told me, don't forget the AFTRA before I interviewed with my board now. Um, so don't forget that, it's important. Um, but when I started my new position with the Screen Actors Guild Association of Television and Radio Artists, um, I knew I needed a set of priorities that would guide the overall organizational objectives uh, for my first year and beyond. One of those was to build a strong commitment to the local labor movement uh, by educating and instilling a sense of solidarity upon our members so they realized and understood how important the movement was and they celebrated the fact that SAG-AFTRA is indeed a labor union, right? People forget that. Like these actors, the folks who do this stuff, they're part of a labor movement, you know, part of a labor union, part of the labor movement. Um, so I'm happy to announce that the Dallas-Fort Worth Local has now officially agreed to affiliate with the Dallas CLC. Uh, I'm very proud of that. Thank you. Our Houston Austin local is an affiliate of GCAF, of the Gulf Coast Area Labor Federation, um, and they have been for some time, but we're re-engaging. Um, and one thing I want to make sure I do is give a shout out to our newly appointed delegate to GCAF and our SAG after Houston Austin local board member, Allison Wolf. Allison, are you with us? Allison. I'm, get, I'm gonna have to run today in a bit, but Allison's gonna hang out. She's excited to get to know all of you. We're excited to be a part of the broader labor movement and just be a part of this convention this week. Um, you know, like I said, last week, my daughter, a few board members and I went to the Dallas CLC meeting um, and we couldn't have received a warmer welcome uh, from everybody in attendance. Not only did the delegates show us a strong commitment to solidarity with their warm welcome to the family. Jean even offered to hold my daughter. She had different ideas. Jean, don't take offense. She does that to lots of folks. Um, but I spoke uh, um, about, you know, what was going on with their strike. Um, before I could even get finished or really even get started, they immediately called out, pass the hat, right? And I think Jean, someone snatch the hat off my board member's husband, and it was going around. Um, before I could stop him anything, the hat came back to me, and I was, I was shocked to see it had $186 and some odd cents in it, right? That's, I mean, that's a lot of money for retirees, local union folks, there were a bunch of young, is it y'all, the youth movement, folks in attendance, and like, we were really touched uh, by that, um, I, I was really personally touched, and I know my board was as well. We're gonna put that towards our strike fund. We appreciate every penny. Um, but we were genuinely moved by that. And you know, all the calls we received from leadership before and after we called a strike, from Rick, other folks offering to help, um, and the thought of where that money came from, like I said, everything else. Um, you know, we just know we have a lot of support here. And this is what I love about the labor movement, right? People are genuinely committed to people. I heard Rick talking about this earlier, talking about you know the legislation this year, attacking trans youth, things like that. Folks, if you're here, you're here because you're committed to people, other people, people you don't know, um, but your commitment to supporting a whole bunch of people that you've never even laid eyes upon is what makes our movement so strong and so powerful, and it's just inspiring and a good reminder for all the positives present in our often negative world. Um, the work y'all do really shows through to me, and it's a good reminder to me about all the positives in the world. So thank you for all the support. Uh, but this is why my dad brought me to CLC meetings when I was a kid. The reason he stopped on his way home to pick me up after work, covered in dirt and sweat from a day sitting on top of crane, welding in the summer heat. That he even thought to show up to those meetings when he could have gone home and fell asleep or done a dozen different things with two young kids in the house um, is just a testament to what this movement means. And that was in 1980 or 2000 three, something like that. No, it was probably 1986. I didn't think I'd date myself. Um, but 
the extra round trip to pick up me and make sure I was exposed to those values are the reason I'm here today. Um, and, you know, it tells a tale. I know that all of you tell each of your own ways every single day at work, at home, and in your communities. These are the stories we need to tell every chance we get to every person, to everyone we engage with, um, to strengthen our movement and just help people all over the world, all over this country, all over this state. So the movement just isn't about the Teamsters UPS, US, or sorry, UPS drivers who are prepared to put their family's livelihood on the line to win a fair contract they deserved. Shout out to the Teamsters. I would imagine we got some Teamsters in the house. We strike and we prepare to strike, not because we like striking um, or want to disrupt for the sake of disrupting, or for the sake of acknowledging our own power, although it feels cool to see your power, right? The birth of our power. Um, we had, you know, the, the threat of the largest strike in US history, and the Teamsters were able to get what I, what I think, and I hope is a fair contract that they deserve, because they stood up, um, they made a mark, and all of you stood behind them, and they knew you were standing behind them. That's what the labor movement's about. Um, we had a major film production in Oklahoma City going on the night that we officially called a strike. We heard rumors and rumblings of them planning to bring in scabs to finish shooting um, after the strike, which was called at midnight Pacific time. Um, our folks walked off the set at 2 a.m. because they were shooting late into the night. And I couldn't have done that without the help from my good friend Fitz Jennings uh, from UFCW Local 1000. The Oklahoma CLC, Oklahoma City CLC, and the Teamsters in the area is just another example of all the folks. Um, but to get, get to our contract and our fight, what are we asking for? Um, we know that David Zazula, uh, the Warner Brothers CEO, made $286 million over the course of two years. Um, we're asking that our performers get a minimum earnings ra raise to keep pace with inflation. We asked for 11%. Um, we're bargaining with the AMPTP. Um, think Sony, Warner Brothers, Netflix, all of them. And so they came back to us with 5%. They wouldn't go anywhere else. Um, they didn't want to talk about it didn't want to do anything. Um, and I'm gonna scoot ahead, but this is a big, this is a very small part of a long list of considerations they refuse to even meet us halfway on. Um, we're committed to this fight, and we are because we know we have the support of the national AFL-CIO, all of you in the background. Um, it gives us strength and solidarity. You've already been so helpful in so many places. I'm working with folks in Dallas and Austin to plan rallies in the coming weeks, so stay tuned. We look forward to seeing you all there. Um, but really, I just want to say thank you um, for putting this together, Lee, Rick, Leonard, everybody else, and just for your strong support of us. Um, this is going to be a big fight. Our brothers and sisters with the Rider Guild, Riders Guild are fighting the same fight, and we need your support more than ever. Um, if there's any questions, I'm going to hang out for an hour or so, so come find me. I'd be glad to talk more about what we're up to and how you can get engaged. Thank you.